exporting your photos from Luminar 4. It's a really important subject. You need to know how to make sure your photos are looking their very best when you send them out to social media platforms like Instagram or uploading them to your website. So stay with me in this video and we'll walk through all the best settings to make sure your photos look great. Cheers for coming along for this one, guys. So now you've done all that wonderful stuff to your photo in Luminar 4, you're ready to export it. There are several ways you can do that. So now we're greeted with the export image dialog box. What I'll do is just walk you through each of these options and explain what they mean. So first of all is our location. That's where we're saving this on our computer. Pretty self-explanatory. You can browse and actually choose the correct folder that you'd like your work saved into. Mine is the Luminar exports folder. I'm happy with that. I click OK. Next, we need to choose an appropriate file name. And I strongly recommend that you choose an appropriate name that is meaningful to the image. Personally, I always like to have version one, version two. If I just want to change things slightly and I want a new version, I can keep the old one and replace it with a new version. Format is quite an important topic that we need to address. Now, currently we're selected on TIFF. It's a file format that's been around for ages and it's really robust, but the more preferred file format for the web, even by most printers these days, is JPEG. And I would strongly recommend that unless you've got a specific reason to go elsewhere for a different option, choose JPEG here. Depending on which file format you choose, the options below will actually change. But let's focus on JPEG as that is the most commonly used file format. Here we've got the option to sharpen our image on the way out. Um, you can choose a low, medium or high setting. Personally, I like low or medium. And what we can do when we're exporting is actually change the size of the image we're exporting. This is particularly useful if you're uploading to the web or to social media platforms. So currently you'll see that the actual size of this image in pixels is 8,247 by 5,504. And if we calculate that out and multiply that, that gives us the megapixel size of the sensor, which in this case is a whopping 45 megapixels, which is pretty huge. So if you're putting something up online, you really don't need anything of that magnitude. So what we could do is bring that down. So if we want to change this, we can change to either the long edge, short edge or specific dimensions. So if we work on the long edge, which is the wide edge, we might choose to go for, say, Facebook, something around 1200 or 1500. I find those kind of numbers work quite well. You don't really need anything too huge for Facebook. Most of the time these days, people are actually consuming the content on Facebook, Instagram, etc., on their phone. So this number really doesn't need to be too high, and that's going to save you space on your hard drive. The color space that you're saving to is also important. If we have our drop down here, we'll see three different color spaces, sRGB, Adobe RGB and Pro Photo RGB. If you're not familiar with color spaces, don't panic too much. Basically, Pro Photo gives you the most latitude with colors, Adobe RGB slightly less and sRGB is actually the smallest color space. However, it's actually sRGB that the internet is built around. It's also sRGB that a lot of printers will want the work sent into them as. So again, unless you've got a specific reason to go for one of these other ones, sRGB is a great color space for outputting your imagery. When you're actually working on your files, I recommend working in a much bigger color space than sRGB. So I usually work in Pro Photo RGB, and then when I export, that's when I change the color space to sRGB. The resolution, which is in pixels per inch, is only relevant when you're actually printing a file. If you're not printing, that is kind of redundant, really. Um, so you can just leave that alone for now. If you're sending it to print, though, Check with your printer what that optimum setting is. Currently we're at 240. The printer I use likes to receive files that are 300 pixels per inch. But as I said, it's only relevant when you're actually going to print. If you're just sending this stuff to the web, don't even worry about this setting here. Now the next setting is quality. JPEGs are really good at compressing imagery. Um, and if you keep this number up high, anywhere from sort of like 75 all the way to 100, you're going to get a really nice quality image out of that. If you drop that too low, you're going to see that you start to get a lot of 
JPEG artifacts which really don't look good in your images. So I like to keep that somewhere up around that sort of 80 mark. When we're happy with all of that, we just hit export and Luminar does its thing. Now, if you're wanting to send your work directly to Instagram, what I would actually recommend doing is cropping your image before you send it out. So let's come to the crop tool. Let's come to the aspect ratio and change that to either a five by four or one to one square. Those are the ratios that Instagram likes. Let's choose a five by four and it's a vertical five by four that it wants. So let's pop that that way, move that to a place where we're happy with the crop and click done. Now we're gonna press Control, Shift and E and up pops our export image dialog box and now we have the option to export this for Instagram. While we are talking Instagram guys, if you wanna see more of my photography, I'd love it if you'd follow me on that platform too. You can find my main account, Anthony underscore Turnham underscore photography and I've also got more niche specific accounts, one for landscapes and one for architecture. They're on the screen now. So follow me there, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it probably won't be awesome, but it'd be nice to have you follow me. So I would recommend sending it to a location that you have set up specifically for Instagram photos that can go to your phone. Choose an appropriate file name. So in this case, I'll keep it the same as the original, but append it with Instagram. We're happy with it being a JPEG. We might add a slight bit of sharpening. And here we're gonna change the actual size. Now for Instagram, we want the width of it, which is the short edge in this case, to be 1080, 1080. sRGB is the color space that it wants to receive. Quality we can keep around here. We can even push that a little bit higher. Instagram, just like Facebook, will actually always apply its own compression on your image when you upload it anyway. So I think if you start with a nice high quality and then let Instagram or Facebook worry about doing that compression afterwards, then you're in a pretty good place. And once we've done that, we can just hit export. And that photo is ready to go to Instagram. Guys, there really is no point having these amazing photographs just sat gathering digital dust on your hard drives. I strongly recommend that you follow the steps laid out in this video so that you can export your work and get it either printed, put it online, or share it via social networks. Guys, just get your work out there. So this was part nine in our training series. In part 10, we're gonna look at the Sky Replacement Tool, which is an absolute powerhouse it's a real beast so if you're like me and you've wasted far too much time in photoshop in the past trying to mask out skies to replace them uh, this is the tool for you so join me in that episode and we'll look at how we can swap out some skies see you there guys